All right, and we're recording. This is uh, part two of the White Lotus of Light interview series. Uh, uh, today, my guest, um, who is just absolutely amazing, is uh, Laura Magdalene Eisenhower. We already did part one, and we went into her uh, vast uh, bio of amazing skills and talents, um, leadership, uh, information that Laura is sharing um, in part one. And so you can go back and I really recommend you watch that before this part. But if not, we're just going to jump right into it. And so, um, Laura, I guess one of the things I wanted to ask right now, this is going to be kind of a more um, personal part of the interview. That's just going to be more about Laura. Like, I want to get to know the woman behind all this um, you know, uh, information activism, I guess, is one way to describe what you're doing, you know, because you talk about holistic medicine, you talk about spiritual um, transformation, evolution, you talk about alchemy, you talk about exopolitics. And the one thread that kind of uh, weaves uh, all of that is you have this real desire to bring forth uh, suppressed truth and, and educate people. And so right now, what's kind of like, what are you really putting your effort and focus in on life? Is it, I mean, what, what, what's like lighting you up right now um, in terms of this, this mission that you have in life? Well, I still pu pull together presentations. I'm not traveling like I used to. And I always, you know, try and update the information. And I talked a little bit in part one about the content. So I won't really go into that so much. Um, and then projects, in the area that I'm living connected to land and, um, you know, permaculture and homesteading type stuff and raising animals and um, potentially having a healing center as part of my greater vision. And just, yeah, these kind of collaborations where, you know, really building community mm -hmm. um, and helping people to transition out of maybe the matrix job or career that might be compromising them. And they're not a willing type, but they might feel like they have no choice. I'm really working on helping to build communities so that, those kind of individuals and, you know, those that also feel like they're not around any like-minded people, that there's a, a sense of uh, just togetherness, Community. mutual love and support. And so I, I try and um, help people, you know, launch their thing. And, and I'm always open to hearing about people's, you know, products. Um, there's so much to counteract a lot of the, um, the just fears of the, 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 this illness. I mean, there, there's so much that we can be connected in on um, to have the highest health and wellness to be able to advance and upgrade our DNA and move in a really, really, you know, good direction. So I, I work with different companies that sell particular products that I really, really believe in that I think are really helpful in these times, like EMF protection and different uh -huh. types of, you know, mushrooms like chaga and reishi and Awesome. Um, and yeah, the green foods and the best zeolite that you can get kind of thing. And it's, um, I, you know, anybody who sells something is going to say it's the best you can get, but they're real, like legitimate articles and reasons I say that. So that's a part of my website and I'm kind of always looking out for, you know, products and things that I feel we, we could really, you know, benefit from and get the information out there from people that have a hard time putting their information out, um, and just, yeah, spread that kind of awareness. So that's like really big is to help those that are, you know, being shut down. And then I'm jumping onto a lot of alternative platforms that aren't censored. So I've had so right. many people shut down and it's really taken a big like chunk out of my ability to do what I do. Yeah. Um, I'm about to jump on board with some really amazing platforms. One of which will be able to produce shows that have incredible graphics and edits and things that I've never been able to do because I didn't have the tech ability. So those wow. projects are going to be fun. So between products, sharing information and bringing more exposure to um, some of the things I do in presentations by having like little, um, you know, our shows, you know, where I can bring forward slides and give little mini presentations. That's really where my focus is going. I have about three books that I might condense into one that mm -hmm. I need to get out. I've been meaning to get out. Um, I yeah. told you about the one that kind of got hijacked. So I've been trying to get back on my feet with that ever since. And so those are the things that are, you know, and when I look at it, I'm like, oh my God, I'm almost overwhelmed. That's just so much, but uh, I can do it and I'm going to do it. I'm out of the slump in the morning of what we were talking about before of watching what is going on with our friends and family. I was, I was really not doing so good for a, about three months and I'm kind of feeling like myself again. Um, and I just have to honestly process through it and just feel it because you got to feel it to heal it. So, but yeah. um, 
I'm feeling a lot better as far as that, that goes. So, so I, I'm going to be very productive. That's awesome. So that kind of like um, segues me into my next section. And um, oh, I was going to ask you, you know, um, all of us right now are dealing with various struggles and all of us hopefully are also having parts where you, where I at least am having this real duality of real struggles and like with friends and family and just like the limited mobility and just the stress of, of being with yourself that this sort of global initiation that is being under these various levels of lockdown or whatever, and just the way that that's um, diminished human interaction and it forces us in a way to go within. And that's one of the positives, one of the silver linings, this whole thing. And so I've had real breakthroughs as well. And so would, would you describe and maybe um, just talk about anything that, that, you have struggled with recently and then any recent triumphs you've had of where you've just been like, wow, something really clicked into place for me. What a great question. Oh my gosh. Oh man. There's always something that's just really kind of challenging me big time. And I know this is the kind of challenge that a lot of us are experiencing and a lot of the stuff, you know, I've gone through, I've I've met a lot of like-minded people that can relate to some of the the things, but I would say as of recently, yeah, definitely the friend and family thing, just feeling this, this has all happened so fast. People aren't taking the time to really think clearly about the decisions they're making Yeah. and how much messes we've been cleaning up, how much work so many of us have been doing for so many years. And it just feels like, man, there's so much more mess to clean and it's just like endless. So, I mean, I know that there's going to be a bifurcation and I know that it's not like, oh yeah, we're here to save the day, but it feels like there's going to be a lot more work, which you know, I have a lot of passion for, so it's not like, oh, it's a burden, but really <clears throat> I feel like the need to engage in, you know, different communities, really encouraging people to come together uh, in their communities, Absolutely. <clears throat> to support one another. So, you know, I'm trying to do that online, but I'd love to just get a tour RV vehicle and be on the road. I know Sasha Stone and Robert Davis Steele are doing a resurrection tour and I'm going to do a few stops, but I'd really love to just you know, not necessarily rent an event center, but just go into that grassy area of, you know, how a town has that grassy area and usually a little pavilion thing and just go there with a microphone and just start talking or have like, you know, some musicians or other people, you know, kind of join in and just be personable, you know, like interview people that are maybe walking along the street, just, and just get the juices flowing of like, gosh, you know, this lockdown or this intensity or this kind of being in a trance and wearing a mask, like, can we just like raise the vibration and just like, you know, be real with each other and actually talk to each other and get to know each other instead of just walk around. Like, I don't know, like I just, so I don't know if that would mean that I would go on the tour, but I I know that people like Dr. Shiva have created courses and um, tools and just videos to inspire people to do that similar thing. That's why um, I had him on the show a few times because I'm like, yes, that's exactly because that's, you know, taking action. Are, are, are you can't just ta- sit back and allow this. There's all sorts of things that we can do. Are you talking about the MIT Dr. Shiva? I think he's from MIT and like was, uh, had some questions about integrity of certain uh, counting stuff that happened last November. That's another no, no subject. Right. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's brilliant. Wow. You had him on, on your show. Yes. And I'm signed Fantastic. up with him. Yeah. If you, if, if you look at my website and scroll down, there's a warrior program and I have those links and um, I uh, kind of work with 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 what they're doing. Um, not that involved, but I mean, I have ways to you know c- connect people in. And um, and it's very hands on. It's very much about activism. It's very much about what can we do. We can't just like sit back and take it. You know, it's like if a bully's like beating us, I'm just not a sit back and take it kind of person. And I know a lot of people just want more permission. They want to feel more camaraderie. They want to feel like less alone in. Um, taking that step into courage. Sometimes people need a hand to hold to, to, to become courageous. You know what I mean? So, um, and it's not about being polarized. It's not about right or left. It's not about any of this kind of stuff that I get a lot of criticism for. I'm like, you know, even before that letter in the alphabet movement came up, Mm -hmm. I've been doing this for years before, like, Mm -hmm. but um, people want to so easily like throw a person under the bus. And I just, uh, anyway, but that's, that's their deal. Mm -hmm. But, but I just want to, you know, just be a person, be a person of love, be a person of service to humanity, be a person that, um, makes people feel safe, 
uh, and, and opens up a greater dialogue so that we can begin to process in our local communities um, you know, what we can do in the face of this unbelievable medical tyranny and mm-hmm. also um, provide more resources to inspire people to think about you know, all that we're made of. And now that I don't travel anymore, everything is either going to be online or I'm going to show up in your town, but I ain't going to fly a plane, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, wow. I hear you on that. That is something that's like just one of the biggest bummers is the just total lockdown of travel. It just, it it really sucks. I mean, obviously the lockdown to our house is even worse. It's just, it's a, uh, for people who haven't been able to, who were getting ready to, you know, um, I had wanted to take my son, you know, I have a, a son who's just old enough to kind of appreciate traveling and I wanted to take him to see Scotland. Um, you know, my last name's Ferguson and it's kind of uh, the homeland. And uh, there's a lot of history there for my family. Um, I think even uh, Templar history there. Um, you know, uh, I myself am a Templar now, but um, I'm talking about the original Templar and, and kind of their diaspora um, after the, uh, you know, uh, burning at the sake of Jacques de Molay and the suppression of the Templar order, a lot of Templar fled up to Scotland um, and started a Scottish Rite Freemasonry. And I know that my family, many generations back, I myself am not a Freemason. I'm a Templar, but not a Freemason. But my family going back generations are uh, Freemasons back into the midst of time. And in those days, you had to either be really be somebody to get invited or you had to save a Mason's life or you had it passed down through bloodline, hence the term grandfathered in. And so I have this deep history there and I wanted to share it with my son. And I, I haven't, I've been to Britain many times, Island of Britain, but I've never been to Scotland. I was ah. as far north as York and I never made it to Scotland. And I was like, how cool I'm going to be able to share this with my son. And then boom, it just I know. You know, didn't this happen. Gotta stop. This has got to stop. And I really feel that there's enough of us on the planet and our numbers outweigh and there's a lot of- Well, they're growing teams. too coming together. Yeah. And and some of these protests happening all over the world are so huge and they're not violent. These are just people that, you know, and and the violent ones are, are, I I don't know how they've been able to fool so many people um, with this whole BLM thing. And it just blows my mind because it's like, there's blinders onto everything else. Uh, I I don't quite understand it, but that's interesting because I was born in England. I've been to Scotland and uh, we're connected to the Brody clan, the Scottish side of me. I don't know if you know the Brody clan, but, uh, um, yeah, I mean, my boys are not going to have the chance to easily go over there either. And I wanted to take them there and, and just, this is a big bummer for a lot of people who are world travelers or interested in traveling because, um, of what they're doing. But I, I really think that yes, there's a bifurcation, but there's a lot still happening where these two timelines are so close and connected where, um, you know, there, there's going to be justice. There's going to be things taking place before a major split happens to keep the NWO from maybe getting worse than it is right now. I really do think that something is going to halt it and break this apart before there's any kind of major bifurcation, because we're not just going to split away anytime soon, I don't think, but there already is a split. Like we're in different dimensions. We're in different frequencies already. So to me, like we're, the bifurcation is already happening, but we can still see each other and we're still taking action for where they don't want to stand up and take action because they're complying and buying into it because we want to protect future generations it's like if you guys can't step up to the plate we're gonna have to do it and but there's only it's so long that we can continue this or else Mm -hmm. we're putting ourselves at major risk and that's why the benevolent ets have a hard time helping us here and of course they don't want to completely intervene but they certainly are lending a lot of support yeah i mean i i have a deep confidence that um we're going to come through this. I had a, a number of visions um, around 2000, crossing over into 2001 that winter, um, and then experiences since then, mystical experiences where I, you know, clairvoyant experiences would be the best way to describe them, where I have seen this exact time period. I mean, now that it's here, it's kind of like, wow, this is it. But I, but I, I, I have known that this was coming. I actually had a vision in which I saw uh, 9-11 before it happened and the 2008 crash before it happened and this before it happened. I saw three specific mega events that were coming in the next 20 or so years. And 
that later that year, 9-11 happened in exactly where I had seen that it was going to happen. I didn't see the planes and the buildings. I just saw a huge explosive event that happened in New York and spread across, spread darkness across the country. And then I saw another huge explosive event coming out of New York that washed across the country. That was this, um, you know, uh, the great crash. And then I saw a third wave which was the biggest wave of all. But I saw that right before the third wave happened, there started to be all this fighting of the darkness amongst itself. And so I've long seen this period of time as a bottleneck. And so even though I have no doubt that things, that the forces of good will triumph on the timeline of the uh, organic ascended masters timeline, I also know that a great many people are probably... um, going to experience a lot of suffering between here and there, and there will be a a lot of deaths. Unfortunately, I think that that's almost a certainty. And that's what some people signed up to come here and do now. I mean, this is all part of a greater orchestrated symphony at at a level that's so far beyond the human mind. I mean, you have a picture of the cosmos behind you. We're both astrologers. I'm a Vedic astrologer. Um, You do tropical zodiac, Western astrology, uh, various stripes. And we know that we are this tiny planet on the fringe of a vast galaxy of which there's millions or billions of galaxies with trillions of stars with tens of planets around each of those stars. Like this universe is vast beyond comprehension. And, you know, I watched your interview with Freddie Sylvan. He talked about how there's cycles within cycles. And we talked about how in part one, that all these cycles are coming to a head. The great years changing. Kali Yuga is ending. Um, this uh, 80 year uh, fourth turning cycle is happening. Uh, There's just so many cycles that are all coming to a head right now. And we signed up to come here right now, including anybody watching this video, even the people who are making the decision that to us seems foolhardy, they signed up to come here and to even play that role, which is heartbreaking for you and I. and so I know that the I, I know that the forces of good will triumph, but I do think that it's going to be an extremely challenging time to get from here to there. Even though I see by 2025 things are going to really change, so it's really this next four years where this really intense internal work has to be done. And so I wanted to ask you, uh, Laura, I'm going to do a screen share here. What astrological transits are you seeing having the biggest impact? on what we're going through right now? Well, I would say the Saturn square Uranus is a big one Mm -hmm. because Uranus really represents liberation, authenticity, connection to our higher mind. And it also is the shock and upheavals that lead to greater awakening. It really impacts our nervous system. And so every planet has a shadow side. I would say the shadow side of Uranus Mm -hmm. uh, connects to dark technology because Uranus connects to technology. And sometimes there can be sort of a, a coldness or sort of a detachment um, lack of emotionality for some of those eccentric type doctors that use us like guinea pigs that I feel like have that sort of shadow Uranian energy. And then mm. you get the shadow side of Saturn, which is very tyrannical and it's all about control and authority. Yeah. And they're in squared aspect with each other, um, meaning that we're being challenged by both of these forces and how that impacts us personally. Well, in the way that I kind of work with astrology is how can we get to the higher octaves of these planetary yes. bodies? And if they're forming a challenging aspect, what is that tension and challenge um, showing up to uh, give to us? Some astrologers say, oh, squared aspects are just going to be challenging throughout your whole life. And and it just seems like kind of an unfortunate thing. And I don't see it that way at all. I, I feel challenge and adversity is what gives us spiritual muscle. It's what helps us to grow. It's what helps us to um, take on challenges maybe we wouldn't take on because it doesn't leave us alone. It makes us uncomfortable. And sometimes when we aren't uncomfortable, maybe we don't get up and do anything because there's nothing really yeah. pushing you. So when there's a nice, healthy balance between challenging aspects and harmonious aspects, mm-hmm. you know, that works out great. So like looking at relationship charts, it wouldn't work mm-hmm. to just have nothing but harmonious aspects because people have come together to grow together. But if the challenging aspects outweigh the positive, yeah, sometimes that doesn't end up working out. But so the higher octaves of Uranus, it's all about sovereignty, liberation, connection to the higher mind, and making a challenging aspect of Saturn. So wherever people fall in their processing of it is not going to be the same, right? Right. So one of the challenges, I kind of showed sort of the lower level of uh, what the shadow side represents, but one of the um, the things that we can you know strive for is understanding the challenge between 
wanting our freedoms and and those freedoms are being threatened the saturn square is mm -hmm. like the dark tyrannical saturn part of it challenging or threatening a person's sense of personal freedom so what we have to do with a squared aspect is to let both somehow work together in this discomfort how can we allow a, a sort of compromise or a win-win situation not like a negative compromise but Okay, so Saturn's higher octave is about self mastery and becoming mm. like you're going through the trials and tribulations of life, dealing with obstacles and blocks, and then finding the strength to overcome it to the point where one gains self mastery instead of stays under the control of the tyrannical authority or rulership that the lower octave of Saturn represents. As far as Uranus goes, we have to switch on the lights and realize that a lot of these solutions that they're presenting are part of the shadow Uranus, sort of like false Aquarian age false sense of, oh, you know, just get the, you know what, and we'll get our freedoms back and we'll have this or that. And, um, and some of these technological breakthroughs that connect with transhumanism, these are the solutions to help our dying world and to help the environment. You know, all these manipulative tactics to keep us sort of allowing solutions that aren't really good. If we could flip that over and go to the higher level of uh, Uranus, which gives us upgrades, it uh, helps to advance our DNA, then we, realize we're not dependent on these technologies. We're not dependent on these rulers or leaders. We have the self mastery and we have the sovereignty and we have the ability to upgrade ourselves so that we recognize that we're the solution instead of constantly um, externalizing it. I mean, of course there's gonna be advanced technologies and things like herbs and supplements that'll be helpful, but ultimately the great awakening is awakening to what we're capable of. Because if we yes. sort these things out within ourselves, and we generate that into the collective consciousness, the earth has no choice but to respond to us. We clean up all the problems in the world through winning the war on consciousness within. And if enough of us do that and link together, we're gonna to see a major transformations happen and things just kind of repair itself. It's sort of like if a person lets go of a negative patterning within their own mind, like self-hatred or something, and you, mm -hmm. and, you, and you snap out of it, then all of a sudden you might find a physical symptom or a chronic issue that you've been carrying your whole life disappears too. Absolutely. So energetic shifts, the physical shifts. So that great awakening can change the whole nature of everything and begin to starve that false system. Unfortunately, so many people have gotten the, you know what? It's sort of like, oh man, it like happens so fast. It's like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> yeah. You know, I watched um, a doctor. Um, I want to say his name was something like Reinhard Mueller or something like that. Oh, I can't remember what his name is. Um, Oh, I wish I could remember. Let me see if I can find it real quick just to get this guy's correct name out. Um, Cause I think I uh, saved it. Let's see here. Um, uh, Dr. Reiner Fuhlmich and, there, and he uh, did a video called we're about to reach a tipping point. And he said something very interested in that, interesting in there. And I guess they've interviewed dozens or hundreds of scientists, doctors, and experts of various kinds um, also including whistleblowers and insiders. And he claimed that there was a woman who was a whistleblower insider who said what's currently unfolding was actually in a plan that was supposed to roll out in 2050. And then uh, various of the vested interests got greedy and they wanted to roll it out in 2030. And this is the infamous Agenda 2030. And then some interest wanted to move it up even further and start rolling it out now. And that is why it's happening so, so fast, like you say, and it's so crazy. And I actually believe that this hubris is going to be part of their undoing because once people take the red pill, you know, to use the matrix analogy that we're all so familiar with, why it's, why it's practically truth or canon at this point, <laughs> or gospel, whatever, um, you know, once you're truly red pilled, meaning you truly have just for once really seen through it you can never really go fully back to sleep again. I see people take the Costco size, you know, thing of blue pills and let it rain over their face. But in some amount of people can go back to sleep for a while, but never permanently. And so our side is growing in numbers all the time. As I said, I myself, um, because of things that happened to me personally and in my family, despite uh, being savvy to certain events in September of uh, 20 years ago, this September, um, I you know, was able to figure that one out basically in real time, but I got buffaloed by this one because it tapped into my own insecurities and I was going through personal emotional hardship at the time, which made me susceptible to it. 
But then suddenly I saw it. So even though I went back to sleep temporarily, I, I, I couldn't ever really be asleep. And, and I am more awake than most people or more iconoclastic or critical thinking than most people to begin with. But I really believe that our ranks only swell. And even more importantly than that, for me, my first awakening, despite having a mystical experience that I described, was then a political awakening. When 9-11 happened, it was this huge political awakening for me. And the pain and suffering I experienced going through the political awakening that I went through, where I discovered things like the elite pedal rings and all that stuff 20 years ago, um, was extremely painful. Um, but then that pushed me on my spiritual journey, which is where the rubber really has hit the road for me. And I loved you did this amazing interview. Um, I forget the gentleman that you work with who does some sort of water thing. Oh, yeah, um, Seth. Seth, right? Yeah. Uh, but you and Seth interviewed Freddie Silva, who I am a gigantic fan of Freddie Silva. Um, I'm as I'm as big a fan as, as he is an actual man. I guess he's a gigantic human being. He's like 6'6 six, six or something crazy, I guess. Yeah, he's, but, he's very tall. <laughs> But he's just a wonderful human being. And I agree so much with what he said. I can feel it deep inside myself. Um, it is scary because it's not here yet. But he said that there's a tipping point about to be reached spiritually. And I really believe that. And people have talked about this for years. Eckhart Tolle talked about it with the New Earth. And many other mystics have talked about it. And for many, going through the suffering of a political awakening and being red-pilled is actually a stepping stone to the really important work, the great work of that inner alchemy that you've been talking about. And you talk about the global alchemy, you talk about this happening on a super macro scale. And to me, that's very similar or goes hand in hand with what Freddie Silva was saying in your interview that this whole process is a huge initiation that's going on on a global level. And the initiation's intent may be, meaning the people who set it up, and the controllers, the whatever you want to call them, you know, I call them the dark magicians because that's my frame for how I understand the real string pullers to be is the dark magicians. Those forces may have intended to initiate us in one direction, this transhumanist gray, um, moving beyond human, syn synthetic humanity kind of artificial timeline. Uh, that's their intent for the initiation, but the initiation is happening in reverse for a lot of people. It's what's waking people up. There are sleepers out there, very powerful souls who have been just kind of going through life and then this hits them and it's activating them. We also have children being born as you've talked about and others. Um, we talked about it in that round table we did a few months ago. Um, their souls incarnating, or incarnating right now that are so powerful, they're, they're gonna literally warp reality around them. And so th these shifts are occurring, they're underway. And what to me, the really uh, urgent call right now is for all of us to go within and do exactly what we talked about in the first episode or first part with your labyrinth, going through that initiation, going through our own personal hell, being Odin on hanging himself on Yggdrasil, and then he wakes up and is his toe has traced the Futhark in the dust. He went through the underworld and he brought back with him the Futhark, the runes. That kind of initiation is what's happening on a global scale right now. And within all of us is that choice between do we succumb to fear and just using fear to let us give away our power over and over and over again until we have no power and we're not even human anymore because we've so lost our individual sovereignty or do we embrace who we are, flaws and all, healing our wounds and really step into our power? And that's why I'm so grateful for people like you, Laura, who have suffered the slings and arrows of being a public figure who's going through this process herself and being a leader at the same time. And it's, um, you know, it's inspiring. And I can't help but think, I believe that a lot of this legacy darkness that we're seeing unfold right now has roots in Nazi Germany. And I can't help but notice that once again, an Eisenhower is rising against this darkness and is stepping out and stepping forward to say, no, nope, 
we'll fight them on the beaches. I know that's Churchill, but you know, we're not going to give in. And that was one of the things you talked about early on is just that you've at no point, you're like, I'm not going to give in to this. I'm not going to give in to this. And we all have that capacity. And every time one of us steps in and owns that, we give permission to another person to own that. Exactly. And so, um, yeah, it, is there is there anything else you wanted to um, say? If not, I have a final question I wanted to ask you because oh, you've yeah. been so generous with your time, Laura. Thank oh, you so much. So fun. I love hanging out with you. Um, yeah. It's been really good. Well, I, I uh, some of the things that I was thinking of sharing, I mean, this ascension window has to do with the fact that spirit holds dominion over physical matter. And the symbolism of the inverted pentagram is very much what we've been dealing with for thousands of years. The, the dark mother reversals, the Baphomet, the, the, these hidden satanic covens and how they're connected to those that are in leadership positions and they have a network all over the planet. You know, mm -hmm. and the whole idea of the 13 families, blah, blah, blah. So as the sun started to move through the 13th sign of Phaecus and the energies of the ether got more opened up and the mother arc energy got anchored into the planetary body again after recovering from all the cataclysms and things that took place um, that pretty much was finalized in the Sumerian Egyptian wars where we lost our galactic memories and we really just began being born with amnesia and the junk DNA was just a scientific term that we're just supposed to accept and, and just the loss of all those memories and, and the rewriting of history and and the fact that all that got cut out of um, our educational system, um, you know, we've been recovering from. Not everybody's up for recovering from it. But the fact is, is that there's something that's available that hasn't been available before. So when they try and light up with these psychological operations, a trigger response um, to cause us fear because we've survived so much. I mean, and we should have more faith after surviving all that we have that we can survive this. But anyway, um, the... Uh, crazy part is, is it brings one back to that, the, these traumas, like they want to light up people's traumas. And uh, we can't really advance if we have traumas lit up. So we need to understand that this is a period of kind of things coming full circle. And the energy circulation is uh, able to actually be repaired. Um, the Venus transits have created this correction, it formed uh, the orbit of Venus has formed a perfect pentagram in the sky and it really represents the overturning of the inverted pentagram so that the ether element is available to the elements, earth, air, fire, water, which our DNA, the nucle nucleic acids of our DNA are actually elemental, earth, air, fire, water, same with the platonic solids and how that relates to it. So we're elemental beings, our DNA is connected with all this. And now that the inversions are corrected on a cosmic scale and an earthly scale, we need to just stand in alignment with it. Let it do its magic, you know, integrate it, breathe into it, let go of all this other stuff and all these distractions, because it's not something we have to figure out. It's something that we need to show up for and be available for so that we can begin to embody it. You know, the intellectual part of it is to recover from the tree of knowledge and, and, and move away from the mind control targeting of knowledge, find self-knowledge, get into alignment and let it work its magic. Let the, let us, you know, be, be nurtured from the inside out, completely removed from all fear and, and, and realize that like the miracle frequency and vibration is not just some anomaly, it is ours. And uh, we have the power to turn lead into gold. And that's why I love yes. the term alchemy because the whole lead into gold, we're dealing with heavy metals, we're dealing with heavy density. And, and we wanna feel that we can turn that around and we absolutely can. So spirit having dominion over physical matter in ways that we haven't had access to before can help us to even use our hand chakras or just our thoughts to neutralize and change the frequency patterns of the things that are harmful and toxic and detrimental. And so if we can stay connected firmly to our soul essence, to our spiritual truth, our nature, and, and be as grounded as possible, there, there's nothing we can't handle. We'll continue to build our auric field. It'll strengthen, it'll buffer or protect us from um, all sorts of nefarious influences. And, uh, and one doesn't even have to be, you know, some people don't realize that we're naturally spiritual. It's not something to claim like, oh, there's the spiritual people. No, we, we are spiritual beings, whether we want to admit it or not, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so we have sort of the personality matrix, our thought forms and the way we process information and this and that, but it doesn't mean it's the truth or it aligns with our higher knowingness. The whole deal is, is can we bring the higher knowingness fully into our physical life and invite it fully in so that these lesser aspects that are so easily hooked in to propaganda narratives, programmings, peer pressure, social influences, fear of what others might think, and these things that literally are to sustain our self-esteem, you know, we need to lose that and rebuild it. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, and, and that people are so um, 
afraid of losing whatever strength they might feel in their ego. Um, and our ego is so important, but it needs to stand for something greater. It needs to be the champion for our spirit and our wisdom and our love and, and be identified with that instead of these societal identifications. Oh, this is what right. special. This is what it means to be this. This is what it means to be that. And, um, I just wish people had, you know, more courage to me. I, it's not hard. Um, you know, but it's sort of like the anticipation is worse than when you actually do it. It's like, yeah, on a plane, you want to jump out of it. You're not sure if yeah. the parachute works and it's, it's harder to get yourself out the door than it is once you move into that arena, then you feel the freedom. Then you're like, oh, it does work. This was the right decision. But it's that anticipation beforehand that really grabs people and pushes them in directions that, yeah, they may one day regret, but as a part of their greater soul journey. I mean, we survived Orion War. We survived exploded planets. We survived so much as a species. We've been modified before, maybe got ourselves back. Who knows? Um, there's nothing really we can't handle. And, um, and I just, I'm all about celebration of life. I mean, literally like, yeah, you know, I like that. I like that, uh, image you use. Cause, uh, I think it's Trungpa, uh, Rinpoche. He famously said the, the bad news is you're falling and you're falling really fast and there's nothing to grab onto, but the good news is there's no floor. <laughs> there's no ground. And so when you relax into that free fall, then it can be a really exhilarating experience. And I want to close, uh, or I, I want to say, um, Laura has a bunch of, uh, real quick before I do a silly little closing thought, um, Laura is always at work, you know, sharing her gifts with humanity. And so I'm going to link down below um, her website, her upcoming events, um, speaking engagements. Be sure you check out her channel. I'll link to her YouTube channel. Um, I'm just going to have all things Laura Eisenhower uh, down below, links wise. Um, and so, uh, yeah, if, if you want to help support Laura in her mission, there's lots of ways to do that that you can find on her website. If you want to help support me to continue uh, cranking out these videos, um, I have a Patreon, or I'm not a Patreon, a PayPal link down below. And even a dollar is great. Helps me, um, you know, keep finding the time to uh, uh take the time to make the connections to get the guests I have, to pay for equipment, to uh, pay for my time. I also uh, am a Vedic astrologer and I offer Vedic astrology charts, uh, both natal charts for uh, zero to 40, and then Navamsa charts for the second half of your life, uh, which is basically 40 and onwards. And I also do um, uh, synastry charts, for people, if you want to see uh, things about relationship, I can time events. I've helped time weddings to be really auspicious weddings. So um, all my services will be linked down below as well. And my final thought, other than my just extreme gratitude to you, Laura, thank you so much for taking the time to be here today. Um, and just to share all that you shared so much, um, just so much goodness. Um, I just wanted to close with the thought that, well, what we're doing here is serious and we really do need to do what you said. And I forget the Sanskrit phrase, but there's a Sanskrit phrase that means rooted in being perform action. And uh, another way of looking at that is that that's the answer to the three parts saying that the world is illusion, Brahman or ultimate consciousness alone is real, but the world is Brahman. So that means just remember that this is a dream, but you know, there is only the consciousness of God behind everything. Everything else is illusion. But that conscious illusion that we're all part of, that's God too. It all is. And so rooted in being perform action. And just remember, if you're ever feeling stressed, remember that song we also used to sing as little kids. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. And if you bring that energy into it and find a light, enjoy in what you do, then you can change the world in just dramatic fashion. So thank you so much for this beautiful interview. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Ian. And I so hope to have you on again sometime soon. Thanks so uh, much. Definitely. I look forward to doing more with you and, and thanks for having me. Thanks everybody. Take care. Yeah. Take care. Bye. Bye.